In this huge and baffling universe, there are a few things more huge and baffling than black holes. Everybody's heard of black holes, but aside from knowing that they're black, are whole, and immensely terrifying, few people know much about them. One of the reasons for this is probably because even learning the smallest amount of information about black holes is enough to drive you mad with existential crisis-inducing questions. Those who aren't fans of being kept up at night have likely been led to believe that a black hole works like a great space plug hole, sucking everything in the nearby vicinity in like a great intergalactic vacuum cleaner. While this isn't fully the case, the truth is much, much crazier. I'm Alex from What Culture, and these are the 10 craziest facts about black holes. Number 10. Hungry Hungry Black Holes Although it isn't the whole story, there is some truth in the idea that a black hole works like a hoover, because it has the strongest gravity of anything that we've seen in the universe. Gravity that fully kicks in at an area of space known as the event horizon. The event being your imminent death, and the horizon being all that separates you from it. This gravity is so strong that even light can't travel fast enough to escape it. This is what gives black holes their dark complexion and their eerily spooky name, because there's simply no light being reflected or emitted to look at. As you can imagine, having no light makes them pretty difficult to see, which is why astronomers have to use other means like X-ray telescopes to make any real observations about them. If light can't travel fast enough, then you sure as hell can't. Get too close to that event horizon, there's only one certainty. You're going straight down that black hole. Number nine, they're everywhere! Perhaps the most terrifying thing about black holes is that they're far more common than you'd expect. In the same way that we on Earth are whizzing around the sun, the sun itself is zooming around a supermassive black hole at the centre of our galaxy, which is a whopping 3.6 million times heavier than the sun. What? If this wasn't intimidating enough, the bigger stars in our galaxy have a small chance of becoming a black hole if they get too dense on the inside. The nearest star this has happened to is a mere thousand light years away, which sounds like a long way, and it is because it's six million billion miles. In the grand scale of the universe, it's literally just down the road. There could be a black hole even closer than that, but given how hard they are to see, it's a wonder we've spotted as many as we have. Number eight, all the singularities, all the singularities. If that event horizon is the black part of a black hole, then the whole part is the singularity which is the fancy name that scientists have given to the area of space that they have no way of knowing anything about. As is pretty common with black holes, the whole sucking in all the bloody light thing makes it pretty difficult to make any real observations, so you just sort of have to make a decent guess about what's going on on the inside. One such prediction for what happens is that information completely breaks down, i.e. the laws of physics just don't apply anymore. This means that if you were somehow able to survive getting on the inside, then you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a planet and a banana. The only thing we can say for certain about the singularity is that once you're there, you ain't leaving. Number seven, Hawking radiation. For the majority of people, Stephen Hawking is just the main character of the theory of everything, but to scientists and space nerds around the globe, he's an absolute hero. Though probably better known for his book A Brief History of Time, in which he tries to explain everything, it was probably his theory in 1974 that set him apart from everyone else. As we've established, no one knows anything about what's going on inside a black hole, but Hawking came up with this idea that they were slowly evaporating, spewing out radiation at extremely slow speeds that they would eventually die out. Trying to understand how this decay actually happens is a bit like trying to find a needle in a haystack with your eyes closed and your hands tied behind your back. It's just a bit difficult. Virtual particles appear, one falls into a black hole, the other becomes real. What? So unless you want to turn your brain matter into porridge, just feel safe in the knowledge that even black holes will eventually die out. Number six, tube black hole? Tube blacker? Forget it. As part of explaining this idea, Hawking also came up with the idea that black holes were actually hairy. Rather than the surface of a black hole being bald and featureless, making them all identical, they actually have small 2D imprints from particles falling into the black hole which is what gives it that hair that makes you think of black holes as being some sort of cosmic cousin it. The hairs are supposedly picked up by the radiation in Hawking's theory, which is how black holes lose energy. No, that doesn't mean that shaving your head will stop you from evaporating into the great abyss of space. Number five, spaghettification. Yes, that is the best word you've ever heard. Also known as the noodle effect, spaghettification is what happens when you fall into a black hole. When you cross the event horizon, the gravity becomes so strong that it pulls your cells apart, leaving you as a one atom thick noodle of plasma. While the idea of being turned into tagliatelle isn't the most comforting thought, just be happy that scientists haven't discovered bolognaseification, which sounds like it would be a lot messier, though it would make for a delicious space-based recipe. Number four, black holes bend space. The reason behind spaghettification being a thing is where a lot of budding scientists give up, as their brains just switch off at the idea of this being a reality. 
If you've heard of Albert Einstein, then there's a chance you may have heard of general relativity. This is what made Albert Einstein famous before he accidentally helped create a weapon capable of melting the skin off of your face and living your whole city uninhabitable. The easiest way to comprehend general relativity is to imagine a bowling ball on a trampoline. The bowling ball pulls the fabric of the trampoline down, creating a curve in its surface. If you were then going to chuck a marble across the trampoline, then its path would be deflected by the dent made by the bowling ball. As an avid trampolinist, Einstein figured this was exactly how the universe works with stars and planets creating those dents in the trampling and fabric of the universe. Because black holes are so heavy, they create the biggest dents, dents which seem infinite and are therefore literally bending space around them. The universe isn't exactly as two-dimensional as a trampoline though, so this means that black holes are bending space in all directions? Unfortunately, Einstein's theories only get weirder. Number three, black holes slow time. That's right. If literal space bending around black holes wasn't weird enough to comprehend, they also slow time. Basically, there is no space and time. They're one thing. Space-time. Time-space. Spam-taste? As space is stretched around a black hole, so too is time. And the way that we understand stretched time is that it's slowed down. If you were to watch someone fall into a black hole, you would notice their movements become slower and slower before eventually freezing on the surface and then disappearing into the abyss. For the person falling into the black hole, they would see time speed up around them like the universe was on fast forward. The film Interstellar explains the bending of space and time pretty well, and the way that the black hole was actually generated for the film used the maths behind black holes to render that 3D image. Number two, we may be inside one. Never mind falling into a black hole, there's evidence to suggest that we're already inside of one. If stuff falls into a black hole, it's entirely possible that stuff is ejected out of an opposite white hole, which could potentially explain what the Big Bang was. Although this seems like a wildly abstract theory, there could actually be ways to test it. First, you need to establish what the universe actually looks like, which is something that scientists are still trying to figure out. If the universe then appears to be closed, then the whole born in a black hole theory could have some weight to it. In a closed universe, you could set off in one direction and eventually you end up back where you started, much like if you walked around the Earth. Another way to test this would be to look at how things in the universe rotate. Black holes spin pretty rapidly, so you'd expect anything on the inside to be whirling around like one of those dodgy looking horses you'd see on a carousel. If we can figure out if the universe is spinning in one direction, then we might be a step closer to finding out where we are. Who knows? In the center of every black hole, there could be another version of you trying to find out the exact same thing. Number one, they don't technically exist. Depending on how you define existence, you might find that black holes don't actually exist at all. That old saying, if a tree falls in the forest but nobody's around to hear it, therefore does it make a sound argument, kind of applies here. If a black hole absorbs all of the light and we can't possibly see the inside of it, and we need light to determine if stuff exists, then does the inside of a black hole really exist? Singularity is just the scientific equivalent of error 404. Singularities are supposedly infinitely dense and infinitely small. Problem is that infinity doesn't exist in the real world. So how can a black hole exist? But if we're inside a black hole and black holes don't exist, then do we exist? 